Um, I think that I, when I was testing this out, I like the Dirty Shirley kind of the most just to sort of do this because it's got this big fatness to it that sounds really cool. Um, but I'm just going to switch between them. So number one is the Driftwood. Number two is the Hughes and Kettner. Number three is the Angle. And then number four will be the Synergy. I'm just going to cycle through it quickly so you can have a listen. So I had a four amp set up there with different levels of gain. The first one you heard was the Driftwood, which is quite mid range heavy. The Triamp was second, which was very, very high fi sounding, lots of gain um, and pretty punishing. I love the sound of that amp. I think it just sounds disgusting in the best possible way. Third one was the Engel, uh, a slightly lower gain. And then obviously the Dirty Shirley, which was the lowest gain of them all, but it has this cool, just fatness to it, which sounds awesome. Yeah, I really like that. So now I'm going to add in just the EQ here that I've already messed around with. I know that you can't really see it that well. Unfortunately, I can get a better camera angle than that with what I have. Um, as you can hear, my voice is probably coming through it slightly as well because it's lighting up. Um, but yeah, now I'm just going to switch the EQ on. I've got, um, I've got a filter on it up to, I think, 50 or 60 hertz. I've got a boost at 1.6 kilohertz by a tiny little amount. I'm boosting the bottom end a little bit and the, the top end is about the about the same so i'm just going to show you that now <laughs> It just kind of shapes the guitar into the sort of the frequency spectrum that it sort of needs to be in, which is the guitar is a mid-range instrument, right? And it just sweetens up that mid-range and I've only boosted it by like, it's less than a decibel, just instantly turning this on. It just instantly makes it sound good. I mean, I'll just play around with it so you can hear it a little bit like what is actually going on here.
So now I'm going to uh, put the compressor in, which I can already see, even though it's bypassed, um, it's definitely doing a little bit too much to it. So um, I'm just going to change that now and then put that in and so you can hear what the compressor limiter does as well. So I'm going to start with just the compressor and then, yeah, have a listen. So this is the compressor on. Compressor off. Gonna add the limiter in now, just to add a little bit more to the sound. Um, which we would be doing this anyway if we had it on on our channel. So we're just trying to get the sound as finished as possible. Um, so yeah, just add a little tiny bit of limiter just to sort of put it back into its place, get rid of any of those crazy transients. That sounds, uh, that actually sounds pretty great to me um, at this point in time. So I'm just gonna take the EQ off and the compressor off. And now I'm gonna take it into, into here. And just have a little bit of a comparison between, um, between the two basically. Um, I'm sure we can get something equally as similar as that. Um, so first things first, I want to start with uh, an EQ. Um, let's see what we got on here. So we've got a 73 EQ here. And let's just try and mimic it and then just, do, just sort of do an AB between the two. Um, so I know that I cut the filter up to the first notch, um, which was this one. And then uh, what did I do with this one? So the low frequency range need a light for this it's a little bit dark in here so the low frequency was at 110 i want to say yeah 110 tiny little boost so let's do 110 and then a little boost like that oh that's kind of right and then the mid range was at 1.6 i think yeah one kilohertz, is that 1.6? I think so, yeah. Yeah, 1.6 and boosted just a tiny little amount. Like that. And then the shelf was ever so slightly boosted. So let's just do one notch like that. So then we can compare what this one sounds like to the Neve one. So let's do that. So I'm going to bypass this one now 
and put the new EQ back on, which was like that. And then this is what this one sounds like. Back to the other one. Back to this one on the antelope. Mute the EQ there. Sorry about that, turn the mic back off. And yeah, so it's pretty close. Like there's a little bit more bottom end to the, to, to the Neve. So let's just boost that just a tiny little bit more on here. And it, obviously the, the, the AMS Neve one doesn't have the notched um, adjustments like it does on the Orion. Um, so yeah, I'm just sort of guesstimating. I mean, that's probably more about right. So let's try it now. That's definitely pretty close. So let's try and add a compressor in now. Um, I'm not really too sure if we have anything particularly similar to what I'm using here with the Neve. Um, usually if it's a plug-in, I'll use something like a 3A. Um, just, there we go. Um, so let's see what we've got here. Um, I can never remember what all of these names mean. <laughs> Ah, yes, okay. All right, yeah. Yeah, like the, it's not really like any of these, but I guess we can just try something. Um, probably try something like this, which obviously is based off a 160 of sorts. Um, so yeah, let me just um, compare it. I'm gonna turn both on, both off, and then try it with the new versions. <laughs> Thank you. 
close. The um, I would say that the Neve has slight bit more body to it, but it's tonally pretty, pretty close. And just to get closer again, I'm gonna actually add a limiter onto this. <laughs> um, so, no, not that one. Let's try the Stay Levin one. That's a bit noisy, isn't it? <whistles> you can hear my voice through that as well. Woo! Um, let's just turn down the volumes of this. Damn. That makes it a little bit noisy. But let's just give it a try. As you can tell, you can hear my voice in the room. It's quite loud, but it's all good. Now I'm gonna try it with the, with the Neve version again. So I'm just gonna bypass all that and compare. I just had my mic on for the entire time of that, so I'm just going to show you again. Sorry about that. And now to compare to the plugins on here, which are, this one in particular is a diff little bit loud. 
for this particular instance. So I'm just trying to see what else I have. I mean, maybe I could put on that, maybe. It's definitely a little bit noisy as well. It's even noisier. Let's just try it with the, with the, uh, the impressor <laughs> to get it similar again. That actually sounds pretty great to me. It's like, it's not really changing too much about the sound. It's sort of just refining what's already there to sort of like squeezing the guitar into sort of roughly where it's gonna be. As you can see by the gain reductions, it's only by two decibels or something. So it's literally just tickling it um, for some of the, the parts. I might even lower the, the threshold a little bit during tracking, but I kind of want to see what that sounds like against the Neve now, just so that I have a Ah, I had the Neve EQ on, how about that? So let's go back. Let's put this back on a second, let's see what it sounds like. Now with the Neve. And now with the Impressor. Let's make sure these are actually turned off this time. Yes, they are. All right, now with the Impressor, the X903 and the BAE. <laughs> Thank you. 
It sounds pretty good to my ears, and now I'm just going to compare what it actually sounds like in the room. Because obviously, the whole point is, is that it's meant to sound how it sounds in the room, right? <laughs> so, let's have a listen. And it sounds pretty damn close. So I'm pretty impressed with that. <laughs> I wonder what it would sound like with obviously two different guitars either side. I mean, that might be a good, a good thing just to test out. Um, so I'm just opening up my, my Cubase software. But while we're waiting for that, what I'm just gonna do is, um, I'm just gonna see what one of the other amps sounds like now when it's going through these particular set of effects. So we've just done the the Dirty Shirley uh, first channel on the Synergy system here. You probably can't see it because the desk might be in the way of it. So I kind of want to try see what it sounds like with a Triumph and see what we get. <laughs> uh, obviously significantly high gain, but the mic position is the same. The only thing that's changed is the amp and settings and stuff like that. So let's see what it sounds like. That actually sounds pretty great. <laughs> um, the funny thing is, is that all I did just then, just changing the, the knobs on, on the amp, was I put all the controls to noon and then turned down the gain. <laughs> That's all I did. I tend to find that that happens a lot. Um, and how does it sound in the room? Just have a listen. Thank you. 
Sounds pretty good. Feels good to play through as well, through in, in the room. So it's just put the guitar in the sort of right frequency spectrum. I haven't, I haven't edited it too much where I'm like notching out things. I'm literally with the, with the Neve style of preamps. It's quite a musical boost around 1.6. It's not like a really thin, narrow cue. It's like quite wide and broad and just bringing up the entire frequency range of a mid-range instrument, which is exactly what you want. Um, I'm just opening up. I'm just going to open up an empty, an empty uh, Cubase project. Um, let me see. Shall I put this? Let's put it on here. Just kind of want to see basically what it sounds like um, when I've got two of them together. Um, and we're in input 10. And then if we want to see to sort out where this is going in the uh, routing. Um, so we've got the AFX out 10, which is going to mix channel 10 there, then TB record, one, two, three, so 10 there, and then, ah, my brain's hurting. <laughs> um, so I need to drag this to, instead of using input 10, use this one. I think that's right. I think so. So and let's add in two for now. Two mono tracks. Oh wow, my bad. <laughs> Just called it number two. Wasn't concentrating. Um, so guitar with, and then add another one. Guitar without. So with effects. I'm just going to get something down um, for a left and a right. Um, let's add another track. with L, guitar, guitar, um, let's get a click track up, um, let me think of what to play, I guess I could play, I guess I could play that on the Dirty Shirley, um, let's see what it sounds like, just moved back to the Dirty Shirley, I'm just switching amps with the Ampy. 88s studio it's like a uh, it's a multi-amp switcher you can daisy chain up to 96 amps and cabs so you can have a real life axe effects or something i mean frederick thorndale has one that's 32 amps frederick thorndale the guitar player with sugar music productive have one that's 72 amps i believe so someone's got to do 96 amps right be ridiculous 96 cabs and 96 amps but anyway yeah so i'm just gonna get a tempo for this um we just work out what what the tempo is um which obviously we can help here because uh have got the tempo calculator here we go so down 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 but get it down 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 but get it down let's just say it's 200 um move this up 200 Right. So, yeah, I'm just going to call this down quickly. It's a little bit loud, isn't it? I hope it's not been... Should be all right. It's quite... It's minus six. I don't understand why it's so loud in there. Huh. No idea why it's doing that. Just have a little reset. It's probably just have got streaming software running at the same time as doing this. It tends to happen. Um, all right, so I'm just going to get this down.
Let's have a listen to this. Oops. Not really too sure why it's uh, why it's doing that. It's probably just something to do with my streaming software. So let me just try just doing it without the effects for now, um, just to see if it is. Um, it tends to, as I say, it tends to happen when I'm doing streaming. My computer's, my poor computer, is struggling. Yeah, it's probably just streaming which is making it do this. So I've just turned off my ISO guards and hope that that might fix the issue. Sometimes it does. It's being very, very difficult. Um, I'm not really too sure how to fix this without restarting, so we might just have to not. Let's try this. It's a big shame, really, because it sounds really good. <laughs> doing that. I've had this before with streaming and recording at the same time. It just doesn't really, really like it. The British thing is though, I'm hearing it fine on here. Let's just try and get a second one down, get some drums to it and just see roughly what it sounds like. It's a shame about all the clicks, but unfortunately there's nothing I can do about that right now. Um, so I'm just going to do it with the effects on. I thought it sounded pretty great. Um, so 10 to 10. Um, whoops, I left my light on on here. Um, yeah, I'm just going to get a second one now. All right, so one with effects, one without. So this one without. It's really annoying about that clicking, isn't it? Let's get a limiter on here so we can just turn it up to volume so you guys can hear it. See, without the clicking, it would be better. Yes, yeah, just kind of like the, the difference between the effects and non-effects is just that it's made it a little bit more polished and correctly into sort of the correct area on which we're going to go. I'll turn the amp up a little bit louder because I hit the guitar so hard. And even though it's almost definitely loud in this room <laughs> i can still hear my pick over it <laughs> and it's so loud um which is why i'm wearing headphones actually so that because obviously gauging this with the with the with the speakers while it's this loud would be kind of impossible um but yeah with the with this clicking issue with the streaming just running everything on here um i guess we're gonna have to call it um 
I wanted to show you it with drums and stuff like that to show you that it's a kind of a finished sound. Um, just cutting out a little bit of the low end, filling out a little bit of the top end. Um, and yeah, just basically just adding in little bits of the process that we would do normally on the DAW, um, which is actually how I approach when I record guitars, really. Um, as I find that less work, you know, getting the source sound perfect, committing to certain things that you're going to do every, anyway means the mixing job is obviously a lot easier, especially, you know, than having to just do all those filters and stuff. If it sounds almost finished, then you're literally just sort of actually mixing rather than fixing. So, yeah, anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. And I'm sorry about the clicks. I'm guessing it's because I'm running on OBS Studio here because it's not done that before. And yeah, thanks to the Antelope guys, Plarman, uh, Leo Bormir, and all the guys there for uh, trusting me with live streaming. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that stuff's great. So if you haven't checked it out already, then you should check out the uh, the Orion 32 Plus Gen 3. Uh, it runs with USB or Thunderbolt. Um, there's obviously the HD version, if that's what, if you're running Pro Tools or um, Thunderbolt. Um, and obviously the discrete series, you've got the Satori, which is a great monitor control, which I've got up there. You've got the Amari, which actually right now that camera is currently sat on, <laughs> which is a great mastering converter as well as the Pure, you know, loads of other stuff. So check out the site. Um, and yeah, sick. Hopefully you like the guitar sound. I thought it sounded pretty good in here. So yeah, awesome. Anyway, I'll see you guys in a little bit, right? Peace.